Welcome everybody to your screencast for Physics 11. Uh, this is a little addendum to the free body diagram and net four screencasts. This one's just some worked examples to help illustrate some problem solving approaches you can use. Um, and remember, we're at the conceptual stage. We still haven't studied Newton's laws in detail. So we're trying to use free body diagrams to have a sense of intuition about how things should turn out. So let's just recall the big ideas we've got so far. So first is we've looked in the last two screencasts at a, a comprehensive problem solving process. And it's got four stages to it. So the first stage is key that we're building a free body diagram drawing forces as vectors, paying attention to their magnitude and their direction. And as we're doing it, we're thinking about the net force. Is it zero? In which case the forces should balance somehow. Or should there be a net force and in what direction should it be? So that's, that's really essential. Step two and three are the conceptual pieces, um, sort of a, a deeper level, that because we're adding vectors together, we're always going to be adding all of the forces that appear in our vector diagram. When we add them, we draw them tip to tail, and, and really that's just implying the direction of the vector makes a huge difference. So mathematically, we may add or subtract the numbers, the magnitudes, based on their directions. So once you have the intuition of this, step two and three can really be sort of merged into your background and your thinking. And this can all be simplified into two stages. I'd say the only exception would be if you're not dealing with something that's just in one direction. So the scholarship level problems uh, you may see in the study guide where you have something at an angle. Um, this is a bit harder. You'd have to break this into horizontal components and vertical components using trigonometry. So for example, the force times the cosine of 25 would give you the horizontal component of this force and the force times the sine of 25 degrees would give you the vertical component of the force. So this is more complex for sure, in which case you wouldn't skip steps uh, two and three or, or have them in the background. You'd have to do them explicitly. Uh, but otherwise, um, from what we did in our last screencast is you can look at this whole section and simplify the process. Yay. Now this depends upon your comfort level as you work your way into the problem for sure. But there are two key things. First, you'll still make that free body diagram very carefully, but you'll focus just on one object at a time. Now, you might not pick the ideal object to begin with. That's fine. Then just as you work your way through, if it's not emerging the way you'd like, then try another object and see if you have some insight. When you're drawing your vectors, remember ropes pull on both ends and they pull with the same force as shown in the last screencast. And pulleys don't change the size of the force, they just redirect the force through the rope. The force of tension is still the same all the way through the entire length of the rope. The pulley just changed the direction of the force. So free body diagram is step one. And then step two, you'll apply mathematical logic to the vectors. If they're in the same direction, you would add those forces. If they're in opposite directions, you would subtract those forces. So this is really the simplified process that I encourage you to go through. And in the problems we're going to model, I'm going to use these two today. Um, and again, we're doing it intuitively. So we're not going to be doing a lot of mathematics as we go through. Um, when you're working on your problem set or the more advanced part of your study guide, you might find it helpful to come back to this screenca screencast and look at some of those examples again. Okay. So key is if you understand rather than memorize, the problems will become faster and feel easier for you. They aren't actually easier. They just seem it because you understand more deeply the concepts we've been developing. So uh, as I go through them today, I'm going to go quite quickly and, and see if that pace makes sense. You'll also have a chance to hit pause in the video, try to solve some of the problem yourself, and then continue and see if you're correct. And that might be a good way for some of you to work for sure. So we're going to work with three examples. First, we're going to look at a more complex version of two connected blocks. And then we'll look at more complicated versions of tensions. And these are a bit of puzzlers for some students. I hope this really clarifies things by, by the way we're approaching it this year. And finally, we'll look at pulleys. We'll do a fast review uh, of what we've already seen in the last screencast. But then we'll bump it up to systems with two pulleys and see how two pulleys in conjunction make a difference. So here we go. We'll go through three of them together. And I hope this helps. So first, we have two blocks, 20 Newton and 30 Newton, connected uh, by rope over a pulley. The 30 Newton is on a sandy surface, so there's very little friction. And we're told that this system accelerates, so the 20 Newton accelerates down and the 30 Newton accelerates to the right. 
Hit pause. Now the solution. Okay, so we know that there's going to be a force of gravity on each of these two masses. So we'll just put the force of gravity vectors on the two of them. We know the 30 Newton mass would have a force from the table pushing back up on it, seeing as it doesn't move down. And that the 20 Newton mass is connected to a rope would have a force of tension, which would be the same as the force of tension on the 30 Newton weight. And for completeness, we could put a very small force of friction on the 30 Newton weight. Now let's try to determine the forces and do one object at a time. So the free body diagram just for the 20 Newton mass. We've got the force of gravity down, force of tension up. We know the weight would be the same as the force of gravity. So we know the force of gravity is going to be 20 Newtons in our problem. We know the net force has to be bigger than zero. So the force of gravity has to be bigger than the force of tension. So we know that the force of tension is going to be less than 20 Newtons. At this stage, we don't know what it's going to be, but we know it'll be less than 20. Okay, for the 30 Newton mass, we know that there is a force of gravity pulling down. Um, and we know the table would be exerting a force back up. It's called a normal force, by the way. Um, and vertically, it's not moving, so the net force is zero. Well, the weight of the block is given to us. That's the force of gravity, which is 30 Newtons. So therefore, right away, we can jump and say, hey, the normal force must be the same as the force of gravity. The normal force has to be 30 Newtons. And finally, for the 30 Newton block as well, we can look at the horizontal components. We have a force of tension directed to the right and a very small force of friction directed to the left, but we're told the block accelerates to the right. So the net force has to be bigger than zero. So therefore the force of tension has to be bigger than the force of friction. Now we haven't actually calculated what the force of tension is yet. Um, we know it has to be bigger than 20 Newtons from earlier work in the problem, but we don't know the number. Um, all we know is when we do our calculations later, we should get a larger answer for the force of tension than the force of friction. Okay, and uh, all of this very quick now um, based on our understanding of vectors and the net force. Hope that helped. All right, let's look at the second example. Okay, here we have two 8 Newton masses suspended by a rope connected over two pulleys. Uh, the scales have insignificant mass, so ignore them. Try it. Hit pause on the video and then come back for the solution. This is a tough one. Many students get stumped by this one. Let's see how we do. So first, remember, choose just one object to look at at a time. Don't try to analyze the entire system. So we're just going to look at the scale on the right-hand side. So we have an 8 Newton mass that is hanging there. It's not moving, so the net force is zero. We know there would be a force of gravity pulling down. Therefore, there's a force of tension pulling up that must be the same size for the net force to be zero. Therefore, the force of tension in the rope must be 8 Newtons. And the scale is just connected to the rope, so it's reading the same force. Now let's go to the top scale here. Um, nothing's changed. The net force is still zero. These objects aren't moving. So the force of gravity pulling down and the force of tension on the rope are the same, 8 Newtons. And remember, the rope just connects the force all the way through and the pulley just redirects the force. So the top scale would also read 8 Newtons. Now looking at the whole system, it seems more complex again. We have these two 8 Newton masses hanging. Um, students very often would think that the central scale is going to read 16 Newtons when we now connect the two together. But again, let's just simplify this. Ignore the top scale. Pretend we just have walls there and these are anchored. The situation on the right we've already solved. The situation on the left is identical. Both of those scales would read 8 Newtons. Now let's go back up to the top and think back to the last screencast. Remember when we looked at the forces of tension in a rope? If we broke it in the middle and you held on with each hand, you would see that the force you're pulling with the right and the left are the same. The force is continuous all the way through the rope. That means the scale at the top would read 8 newtons. In fact, all three scales would read 8 newtons. Interesting. A puzzler for many students. Hopefully by treating one object at a time, that really helps. 
Okay, our next example and our last one. This revisits pulleys, but much faster this time because we're using our intuition. We'll apply some mathematics too to solve for a new part. So hit pause. And now you can see the solution. So first, we have this stationary weight. We know there's a force of gravity pulling it down, and we're just going to focus just on the weight. The net force is zero, so we know there must be a force upwards opposing that, which is the force of tension in the rope. Okay, the net force is zero. Um, because these forces are in different directions, we'd have the force of tension minus the force of gravity to get the net force. So therefore, these two forces must be equal to each other. The force of tension must be 80 newtons, and we can label that in our diagram. So now you can choose to focus on another object. Let's just focus on the pulley up at the top. What does it, it see or experience? So it feels the force of tension in the rope pulling down on that side. Um, and that force of tension in the rope is carried over to the other side as well. Remember the pulleys just redirect the force. So there's another force of 80 newtons pulling down that side, which means the applied force has to be 80. But isolating just the pendulum now, the top pendulum support, the net force is zero. We have two ropes pulling down, and we have the force, force from the ceiling pulling back up. So there's our net force equation. So we solve for the force in the ceiling. It must be double the force of tension in the rope, or 160 newtons. So when we solved this problem before, we just found the applied force, which was 80 newtons to lift the 80 newton weight. But we didn't realize there was a force of 160 newtons on the ceiling. Now the other one we looked at in the screencast before was this one. Hit pause. And now we'll go through the solution together. Okay, so this time we're going to label our force of gravity but focus on the pulley. The net force is zero but we have a force of tension pulling up on one side and on the other side. We have two ropes pulling up and we've got a force of gravity pulling down. So the net force on the pulley is zero. So we have two forces of tensions pulling up and the force of gravity pulling down. So when we solve for the force of tension, it must be half of the force of gravity or only 40 newtons. You might recall from the last screencast that it was easier to lift the weight in this case uh, we had to pull with 40 newtons rather than 80. And the force on the ceiling is also going to be just 40 newtons. Okay, now much harder. Two pulleys. Take a look at this one and hit pause. Okay, now let's look at the solution. Use the same strategies though. So we'll focus on just one object at a time. We know there's a force of gravity on the 80 Newton weight, and we'll just focus on the lower pulley. The net force is zero. We've got a force of tension in one rope going up and a force of tension in the left rope going up. So we've got three forces all together there um, associated with that one pulley. So our net force equation, we know the net force will be zero. We've got two ropes pulling up and one force of gravity down. So that's our net force equation. We solve for the force of tension, which again must be half of the force of gravity or 40 newtons. That's actually very similar to the last problem we just did. So we can label those two um, forces, the 40 newtons, now in our free body diagram. And we know that that force will continue through on the rope on the other side. The force is the same all the way through a rope. So we know the applied force is gonna be 40 newtons as well. But now let's focus on just the upper pulley to try to see what the force on the ceiling is going to be. The upper pulley would experience that force of tension down from that rope. Remember the rope pulls on both ends. We'd also see the force of tension from the left hand rope. Remember again, force of tension goes both ways inside the rope. So for the upper pulley, we actually see three forces directed downwards and the force of the ceiling upwards. So our net force is zero. The force of the ceiling now is upwards, but we have to subtract three times the force of tension downwards. So the force of tension is going to be three times, sorry, the force of the ceiling is going to be three times the force of tension in the rope, or 120 newtons. 
So again, a lot more work done by the ceiling here than by us to lift this weight. 120 newtons on the ceiling, and we only had to exert 40 newtons to lift the weight. Cool. And our last one. So hit pause in the video and see if you can solve this one, and then we'll go through the solution together. Net force is zero. Now you'd focus on just one pulley or the other. Repeat the exercise before. If you did it right, the force on the ceiling is 125 and the applied force is 25. Wow, interesting. So this is why we use these pulley systems in sailboats or in cranes to be able to lift very heavy weights. The forces in the cable become very, very, uh, very much less, much smaller than the force of the load itself. But we have to anchor the upper pulley to something very, very strong. And that's why cranes have those big steel booms on them. Um, anyway, hope you found this interesting um, and it helps you with your problem sets. Good luck, folks, and stay in touch.